While some enjoy unimaginable wealth, nearly half of the world's population are struggling to survive. Lack of adequate food, shelter, health and education are some of the many faces of poverty. Without proper representation and a say in what happens to their communities, the poor are particularly vulnerable. In the following program, we see how with little help, these communities have asserted their right to development. Sometimes, all that is needed to overcome poverty is a helping hand. A rural community in central India has implemented a program that has provided them with financial independence with the assistance of government agencies, banks and NGOs. The economic success they achieved has not only given a voice to the voiceless, but also motivated these people to continue on the journey towards development. Cooks, it is said, spoil the broth, or roti, as the case may be. Nowhere is this probably more true than in the area of poverty alleviation in many developing countries. The mushrooming number of schemes to help the poor, despite their good intentions, have often been implemented with little coordination, resulting in confusion and a wastage of resources. In the Ahmednagar district, however, a predominantly agricultural area in central India, things have changed due to an innovative experiment. Under the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific Southern Sisters project, Ahmed Nagar became the first district in India to establish a forum, bringing together the various agencies working on poverty alleviation, from banks to NGOs, as well as the target of beneficiaries. Shandi is one of the villages in the experiment, and the women's group here is a typical beneficiary of the Seven Sisters project. The Samatha Mahila Mandal was formed by the women of the village, following a meeting with district officials who informed them of the various poverty alleviation schemes they could benefit from. First, the group approached the local branch of a state-run bank to obtain a loan of 25,000 rupees to start a small business, manufacturing incense sticks. Next, they managed to get a government welfare scheme for rural women and children to subsidize a substantial part of this loan. And to learn the craft of incense stick manufacture, the women made use of a skills training program, also run by government agencies. And the assistance they received did not end there. The group got help from government marketing agencies to establish links with various outlets both in the neighborhood and nearby towns to sell their products. We have benefited a great deal from the bank loans and subsidies. It is these which have helped us come up. Without their help, we would never have been able to succeed. The members of the Samatha Mahila Mandal in Ahmednagar are the real beneficiaries of poverty alleviation schemes. The feedback that those from this group, like Kalpana Kale, can give development agencies is invaluable in designing better poverty alleviation models. It also ensures that women have a prominent role to play at decision-making stages. The success of the Mahila Mandal incense stick makers 
prompted many more to seek assistance for starting other micro-enterprises. Today, the Samatha Mahila Mandal has managed to take over 50 families from the village above the poverty line and provide them with a stable source of income. With the profits from its various enterprises, the group has even managed to build a community center where tailoring classes have now been organized for villagers. It gives an example of a, a replicable, low cost and district level model, local level model uh, for improving coordination among all different poverty elevation programs and also to increase the beneficiary empowerment uh, so that they can decide about themselves. And uh, we hope that this kind of model will be replicated in all South Asian countries. Thank you.